What's up guys, Evil D here, you're gone. Today I want to focus on a topic I get asked quite a bit by people who see my channel once here and there and I figured, you know what, I will make a video blog on this and then I can just shove it in their face when they come to me. No, I'm not going to do that, I'm not that violent, or maybe I am. <laughs> okay, so the topic is, how can you speak Esperanto, or really any language, but how can you speak Esperanto fluently, clearly, and without too much hesitation, without stuttering um, while speaking? So for instance, a lot of people, they'll learn the language, they'll learn to, um, they'll learn all the grammar, they'll learn a lot of words, or at least a good selection of words, and then when they go to speak the language, you'll be like, blah, 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 uh, 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 oh yeah, blah, 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 uh, and it'll be like lots of stop and starting, and you can see them physically turning words over in their head. Now, the way you defeat that, or the way I found to defeat it anyway, is in the most simplest term is that you need to know how to say everything and every type of context before you actually have to say it. So what does that mean? So for instance, let's say that you wanted to say, um, you walk to the shop uh, while smoking a cigarette, for instance. Vi iras a la butico fumante cigaretón. So you notice there I just used ante while also using a normal present tense verb. Now a lot of people will stutter when they try to use that because they'll be like, wow, this is like trying to figure out how it all fits together within a sentence type of thing. But it's actually quite easy once you know how to approach this type of thing. So, what I said is, you need to be able to say everything in context before you actually have to say it. So you see this dictionary I have right here, okay? Filled with literally thousands of Esperanto words. What I will do every day is I use, um, you know, your basic flashcard program, doesn't matter what program, and I'll put, I'll select one word from that dictionary every single day because I don't have that much time. And let's say the verb for today is, look, let's just open up randomly, okay? So the verb for today is, no, I'm not gonna use that one. <laughs> you wouldn't want me to use that one. Oh, come on, there's gotta be a word around here I can use. Water, okay. So, the word for water, as we know, is akvo. And a lot of people, this is where they make the mistake. They will put water into their flashcard program, and they'll practice water, and then that's it. No, it doesn't work like that. What you need to do is you need to practice water in context. So you need to put water in your flashcard program by itself, then you need to put water as a noun in there, within context, within a sentence. Then you need to put it as an adverb, but you need to put it as an adjective, all within sentences. Multiple sentences, say three sentences with water somewhere in that sentence, okay? And then you also need to put it in with, say, when you're watering something, um, when it's a waterborne, or when it's a water bottle, or when it's watercolour, or when it's, um, a waterfront, you know, all these possible um, variations of the actual word itself in all the different contexts, you need to take every single possible variation that you would use, obviously not every single word in the world, but every variation that you'd use of that word within at least three different sentences and shove them all in there. Now literally for one word, say water, you might put in there 40 different sentences into your program. That's a lot of sentences, I know that. But practice those and guess what will happen? you will actually be able to use those words in context correctly. You won't be thinking, okay, this is an adjective, I've got to swap it to this, okay, now it's in this context, I've got to do this. Because your brain will just naturally just roll through those sentences that you've learnt. And that's how I got to where I am now. That's how I can speak the language how I do now. That's why I, yeah, obviously sometimes I drop the accusative, but that's how I learnt the accusative case correctly. I actually built literally hundreds of sentences in context and then put them straight into my program and I just practice them over and over and over. Now obviously, a, you've got to get a good um, flash program that only picks a certain amount of random words per day based on how well you, you know, you um, evaluate yourself. And then it will go through and as you get better, obviously those ones will disappear from the front. As you get worse, for like particular ones, they'll come back to the front. But the good thing is, you will start using every single possible variation of that word in context. Now you could imagine that eventually your flashcard program is gonna have like 10,000, 20,000 variations, okay. Um, I don't even have my original flashcard ones that I used because I deleted them years ago, but my newest ones, you know, they've got a couple of hundred um, variations here and there, and every now and then I accidentally delete them or something, but it doesn't matter because I've already ingrained certain words and stuff, but let's say, I come across a word that um, I'm in, like I'll be speaking with Kaya or I'll be speaking with myself and I don't, I get stuck and I'm like, uh, what is this? How do I use this? Or even like a grammar form, for instance. Like a couple of months ago, I wanted to practice 
um, saying percent of energy, okay? So, so because that's something you got to say in gaming all the time. So 50% of energy. So say, kvindek procento de energio. So I wanted to get the plural with the da, with the, the numbers all working. So I literally put in um, from zero to 100, all the percentage ranges, okay? You don't have to go that crazy, that's just me. I just slapped them all in there, um, and then every now and then it will randomly pop up one percent, say 61% of energy, and I'll just be like, Sestek uno procento da energio. And the reason being is because I've practiced all those variations of that word, okay? And that's particularly handy if you want to learn grammar forms. Um, uh, like the, the particles and stuff like that, you know, you've got ante and inte and onte and stuff like that. Um, because those you have to practice in context in order to be able to use them correctly. Um, things like the accusative for an English speaker, that's definitely something you want to practice in context a lot. Um, what other things? You've got like da and de. Halfway through a conversation for an English speaker, we'll be like, is this da or de? And then you'll think about it and you go, well, it's a quantity, okay, so it's da, and then you'll continue on. You don't want to do that in a conversation. So literally, whenever you get that little bit of, uh, which one should I use? Find out the correct use, slap it in your card program, in your flash card program, then practice it. Eventually, you're going to get to the point where you don't even think about it anymore. Literally right now, people ask me grammar questions, and some of the times I can't respond. I don't know what the technical reason is for doing it that way. I just know that's the correct way to do it because that's how I practiced it so long ago. And obviously I learned the, the correct way originally and now it's just ingrained. That's the best way to do it. Now obviously that is a ton of work, but if you want to speak a language fluently without having to stop and start and have all these issues along the way, that is the best way to do it if you don't live within the environment. I don't live in an Esperanto environment. Every now and then I'll meet up with Kaya. And that's the way I do it. Everyone else has got their own way, but I just wanted to make this video to focus on that way so you understand how much work it really is to become fluent in a spoken language. Because this is an issue or a mistake a lot of people say when they, they talk to others about Esperanto. They say, oh, it's the easiest language in the world. You can learn it in like three months. Yeah, sure. The grammar, fine. You can learn in three months. The words you can learn in three months. But getting up, speaking the language, that's different. In order to speak fluently, without hesitation, without thinking about it, you need to practice just as much as any language. The only difference is you get to that you get to the point where you know everything and then you just need to practice it 10 times faster than any other language. You still need to practice the hell out of it to get fluent and without any issue, just letting those words just roll out of your mouth. Anyway, that is it. If you've liked this video, give it a like, share it around with your friends, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you're not there, I will practice the many ways to hunt you down and do bad things to you. <laughs> So, as always, I want to thank my Patreon supporters. Those are Robert Nielsen, Lupe, uh, Sarah SC, JZ Knuckles, and Shane Power. And if you want to donate a little bit of money to my channel in order so I can keep making it better and more awesome in the future, there's a link down in the description below.